Well, my heart dwellers, may the mercy and peace of our sweet Lord Jesus be with you today. I had a beautiful experience during worship. Uh, just a confession, I've been feeling a little drawn off in distraction, distractions of every kind, to the point where I was beginning to question if I was lukewarm. In fact, I opened my scriptures to... Uh, the church in Sardis, and that concerns me greatly. When I was looking at basically how the Lord and I have been getting on for the last week or so, I realized that I have been drawn off course a bit by distractions. And when I came to him this morning, I was just very eager to confess that I was feeling lukewarm. And I really put my finger on what's been troubling me. There is just a tendency to get lukewarm. And I couldn't understand intellectually how in the world could I get lukewarm. But I was feeling it in my spirit, and it just really concerned me deeply. Well, after I confessed it, the Lord came to me during prayer in just a very powerful and sweet way. And I said to him, Oh, Lord, I'm undone by your kindness today. I was truly beginning to feel lukewarm. And he answered me, You have been seriously opposed by the type of oppression that leads to lukewarmness. They are skilled in this kind of baiting. But it was your humble confession that called me so quickly to your side to help repair the damage done. I asked him, How does a soul become lukewarm? He answered, First and foremost, by pursuing the world and all it has to offer, whether it be material things, status, power, knowledge, or friends. The more enamored you become with the pursuit, the more time you want to give it, the less time you have for me. The pursuit of these things begins to pave the way of indifference to me. My children, even in your pursuit of knowledge, be ever so careful that learning does not become an end in itself or a distraction away from me and what I've called you to do. Guard your hearts carefully. Whenever you begin to veer off course, don't let it take precedence over what is most important to me, namely our relationship and the outpouring of gifts I've entrusted to you. I guess I better confess that I've been reading Ron Wyatt's book on his archaeological discoveries. I'm truly fascinated by it. He goes about it like a scientist and a historian, although he is a man who's anointed and favored by God more than anything else. And there have been times when I just didn't want to quite put that book down, even though I felt it tug to lay it down and go back to my other work. So I can see how I've been walking the edge with it. The Lord continued, It is a form of entertainment and lifting you out of your current perspective. It is a form of relief, and I don't fault you for it, as long as it stays in its proper place. Claire, you haven't much time. I'd rather you get busy with other things but you may do a little reading in between as long as you don't let it distract you or keep you from your other work. I will gently remind you, time to put it down, and it will be an excellent exercise in self-control for you. Yes, Lord, I have felt you tapping me. Thank you. I've also been aware that very soon all things will be revealed to us in heaven. So the pursuit of knowledge doesn't seem like a very good use of time right now. But I am greatly inspired by your faithfulness when archaeological discoveries are made. And the few things I've collected I see as useful for my children to read once we're gone. My love, you have always been one to go off on tangents, sometimes very good tangents with my direction other times very destructive tangents that caused you to leave important things unfinished. This has been one of Satan's major dynamics to keep you from who I've called you to be. 
but as long as you are obedient to me and aware of the dangers, you have my blessing. There are many suffering confusion right now, going back and forth from condemnation to distraction, to allowing too many interruptions in their lives. When you feel badly about yourself, you tend to withdraw from me, and very often getting busy is the best cover-up for what's really going on inside of you. There is a sweeping movement of condemnation and lies going out upon my people right now, and I am calling upon you, my brides, not to allow it to drag you out into the sea of distractions in the world. Any comfort you get there will only be temporary, and you will come back to yourself feeling more distant than you did before. That is why I gave you that beautiful love letter last night. I am trying to counteract the lies that are being spawned about you not being worthy, about me being dissatisfied with you. Lies, lies, lies. Most of you are bringing me mountains of consolation right now. The enemy sees it and tries to cut it off. His entire existence is wrapped around bringing me grief and hurting me, which he can only do through you or by hurting you and by injuring my beautiful creation. So I am asking you to be vigilant and thoroughly convinced that I desire your companionship and I am not in the least judging or condemning you, only warning and entreating you to spurn the distractions of the world and spend that time with me so I may hold you tenderly against my heart. Be swift to come to me and be vigilant. Don't listen to those lies.